Let's give the Lord a hand praise. That would be pretty good if that was for me or for you, but let's give the Lord a hand praise. He has been good to us. He has favored us. And he's worthy of our praises and our worship. This is Friday, December the 2nd, 2002. We're getting ready to go into our service. Tonight, we'll have our organ to give us a prelude. And then we're going to ask Superintendent James Dock to come with a call to worship. We're going to ask if you would stand on your feet as he comes. Uh, and then we'll have the entrance of the candidates, followed by the Episcopal processional. And the, so we ask if you would stand on your feet at this point. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive and recover of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke 4, 18, 19. Let's give the Lord another hand praise as we have the entrance of the candidates. Adjutant escorts. Following the adjutant escorts, we have the sisters for licensing. Followed by our jurisdictional supervisor of women. women. Supervisor Ruby Terry.
our brothers for ordination, followed by the Episcopal procession. Jurisdictional badges are leading our board of superintendents. Administrative assistants. by Superintendent Joseph Lindsay, followed by the Levitical Affirmation, the Jurisdiction Choir, the reading of the scriptures, the reading of the gospel by Superintendent Maurice Rogers, reading of the Episcopal, Superintendent Samuel Sims, followed by the choir and congregation. Father God, we thank you tonight. God, we've come to give you glory. We've come to give you honor tonight. God, we praise you. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you. God, we bless your name tonight. How we lift you up tonight, God. Have your way in this house tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. God, you know what we need tonight. Jesus, we're calling on your name tonight. Oh, Jesus, have your way in this house tonight. Who by your spirit tonight go? In the name of Jesus, we come to tell you yes to your will and yes to your way tonight. Oh, Jesus. Come on, saints, call him, Jesus. We need to tonight go. We need a touch tonight go. Yes. Have your way in here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Get in every song tonight go. Move in here tonight go. Touch, heal, and deliver. Somebody need a touch tonight. Oh, Jesus. How you Touch right now go. In the name of Jesus, shower down your anointing in this place. Let us feel your presence in here. In the name of Jesus, let your glory fill this house tonight. Yeah, my soul says, yes to your will, yes to your way. Somebody needs you right now. Touch the sick body. 
bodies tonight. Touch right now, God. Saint the Lord rebuke you. We bind you right now. We cast you out of the minds tonight. Oh, Lord, have your way tonight. Oh, Jesus, we call you because you're worthy. We call you because you're able. Do it now, God, in the name of Jesus. Look on our bishop tonight, God. Touch his body right now, God. Touch his wife, God. Look on our supervisor tonight. In the name of Jesus, look on our board of superintendents, God. Bless the leaders everywhere. Hey, Lord, have your way tonight, God. Oh, hey, thank you, Jesus. We come to tell you, thank you. Come on, open your mouth and tell him, thank you. Thank you, Lord. In the way you bless us tonight, God. Just bless your people, Lord. Oh, Lord, we're calling on you tonight, God. Bless the priest word tonight. Bless the priest word tonight. Feed us from on high. Feed us, bread of heaven. Feed us until we won't no more. Look on your people everywhere, God. In the name of Jesus. Bless this house tonight, God. And we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. And if you believe it, clap your hands and shout, Thank God! Come on, open your mouth and say, Thank God! Amen and amen. of the gospel in the book of Mark the 16th chapter from the 15th verse to the 20th verse and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into a cloud and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. book of Ephesians, the third chapter, starting at the seventh verse through the ninth verse and the eleventh through the thirteenth verse. Well, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. According to eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, and whom we have, ex we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him, Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not in my tribulation for you, which is your glory. Hymn of praise. 
by the choir and congregation, Yes, God is Real, followed by the affirmation of our faith, Superintendent Charles Stevenson, Jr. Clap our hands and give God praise. Amen. There are some things.
If you would turn to page three in your program for our affirmation of faith. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We affirm our faith in God. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen.
church they would say you can't tell it we honor God tonight we honor God tonight for our illustrious leader we honor God tonight for our illustrious leader the Bishop James Wilbert Proctor can we celebrate our leader Come on, give it up for our bishop. Come on, you can do better than that. That's our jurisdiction of prayer. Amen. Amen. It is a privilege to serve such a great leader as Bishop Proctor. To our guest bishop and those who have come along with him, to the other bishops who are here, we try, truly thank God for all things that he has done in our lives. Uh, to all the administrative assistants in their respective places, to Chairman Billy Smith and the Board of Superintendents, to certainly our supervisor, Mother Ruby Terry and her lovely cabinet of district missionaries and to the sweetest first lady in this jurisdiction dr Ezora proctor and the superintendent's wives we are so blessed to be in the number one more time 
It is my job and my privilege of expediting the offering on tonight. I teach people that the seed never leaves your life. It only leaves your hand. And when you understand that God works all things together for his good, you trust that whatever you give, he's going to cause it to come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Tonight, I'm going to take my time and receive the offering. I'm going to ask the superintendents if you prepare yourself to share uh, the ministry of giving with $200. Uh, if you can prepare yourselves with that uh, to the pastors and elders, uh, if you can prepare yourselves to share that gift of $100, begin preparing yourselves. Uh, to the supervisor and her cabinet if they could prepare that $100 seed and to the superintendent's wives if they could share that as well. And I'm going to ask everyone else in the congregation if you could share a $20 offering on tonight. I'm going to ask that you would rise on your feet at this time. I'm talking to the superintendents, the pastors and elders, Chairman Smith, will you lead out the Board of Superintendents, sir? They are coming with the receptacle. The ushers are on their way. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Okay. Our jurisdiction of Pratt and Bishop Proctor is sharing with us tonight $1,000. We thank God for our leader leading us out in giving and Bishop Tate is sharing with us $500. Come on, Chairman. Lead the Board of Superintendents out. Will the pastors and elders, will you stand? Thank God for Bishop Jenkins. He's sharing $300. Thank you, Bishop. Pastors and elders, will you stand? If you would like to give electronically, you can give to our jurisdiction, Historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction. Uh, and you will see that right there on the screen while you're streaming. They should have that available for you to take advantage of those who like to give via technology. God bless you, pastors and elders. thank God for our newly elected chairman, the pastor Ted Scott, chairman of the pastors and elders. He's giving as well. If supervisor and her cabinet will come and share the district missionaries, will you rise at this time? Bishop, these soon-to-be-ordained elders are sharing. They're sharing. Amen. Mother, will you lead them out? District missionaries, will you come? Yes. You can give electronically. If you do not want to walk, you can do that. Mother Proctor will be leading the superintendent's wives out. You received them? Okay, she has received them. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask that the new, soon-to-be newly licensed missionaries, if you will stand at this time and come and share her offer. Singing blessed. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. 
So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Everyone else who has not given, will you rise on your feet at this time? If you would like to use the credit card machine, it's going to be to our left. Missionary is there. She will be able to serve you. Amen. Starting from the rear of the building. You come out this center. Praise the Lord. You two come out this center. You come out that and turn around. Come out through this center here. I'll right here. Here and come there and give out and go around. Thank you. Will someone receive from the choir? Bless. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Once you get back to your seats, I want to have a blessing over the gifts that we have given to the Lord on tonight. He is worthy to be praised and adored if you're watching online you can sow tonight as well it should be right there on your screens in the chats go ahead and sow that offering tonight support your jurisdiction those who are watching via facebook and even if you're watching it later via youtube or the second replay you can sow and support your bishop and this jurisdiction let's pray over the offering father in heaven we thank you for the seeds we have sown tonight the grass wither, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God will stand forever. God, thank you for a privilege and an opportunity to give back a portion of all the things that you have done for us. Now bless those who had a mind to give and could not give on tonight. Bless them now. Bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you on tonight. At this time, I have the honor and privilege of introducing our jurisdictional prelay. I say introduce, but I will present to most 
because most people know him. He's what I call a man's man. He's a leader for all. He's strategic in his thinking. He's a husband, a father, and a grandfather. He's a friend, and he's a gospel preacher. I want you to stand to your feet and receive the right Reverend James W. Proctor. You may be seated in the presence of God tonight. God is good. All the times he's good. And it's so good to be gathered here tonight in this setting. And I'm so happy to have all of you present. And let me just do my normal acknowledgement. I do acknowledge First Lady, Dr. Isora Proctor, bless you. And I acknowledge my friend of many years. We worked together, National Leadership Conference, Bishop Morris Jenkins. So good to have you. To all of our, to our supervisor, Ruby Francis Terry. Bless you. Our administrative assistants for the regions, my Episcopal advisors, all of the superintendents, the pastors, the elders, the ministers, to our district missionaries, hard workers, all of the missionaries, the aspiring missionaries, our superintendents, pastors, and elders, wives. Let me say that again. Our uh, superintendent, pastors and elders, wives. And my friend who worked with me many years in the National Church, Mother Myra Banks, God bless you. So good to have you here tonight. To all of the saints of God and everybody who comes tonight to witness this occasion. To the audience and the licentious, we're glad to have you here tonight. I want you to pay close attention to the word as it comes to you tonight so that it can be the challenge that you need when we have bestowed upon you the ordination and the licenses. I want you to take this serious. Don't take it lightly. Before I present our messenger for tonight, this past summer at our USAC convocation, we had graduates. And somehow one of our students' paperwork got mixed up and didn't get transferred to us. And tonight, Dr. Ogayemi, the person in charge of our education for the jurisdiction is coming the commissioner of education Dr. Ogayemi to recognize this student
Good evening. The house has been addressed. But I want to present to you today, put my glasses back on. Missionary Spencer, would you please come forward? Missionary Spencer was my classmate <laughs> at C.H. Mason. We went together. The same year that I was ordained, she got a license. But something happened, and that was a promise that was made. I have to say this. That was a promise made that I will finish. And today, you see a woman of integrity. She stood up and did what she promised to do several years later. And Missionary Spencer will salute you today and I present you to Bishop for the awarding of your certificate from C.H. Mason Bible College. Certificate reads, Charles Harrison Mason System of Bible Institute. Historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ Incorporated. This certifies that Anita Spencer, having honorably fulfilled all the requirements imposed by the authorities of this institution, the Executive Director, Chancellor, and Board of Regents of the Charles Harrison Mason System of Bible Institutes, upon the recommendation of the faculty, do therefore confer this Christian Education Certificate with all the honors, rights, and privileges to all that certificate appertaining given at, at it's Alexandria, Louisiana, it should have been Lafayette, presented on this second day of December 2022. God bless you and congratulations. opportunity to present a brother, a friend, and a fellow laborer as our messenger for this evening. He comes from the city of Houston, Texas. Where he's a native. He was born the second of six children to Elder Inez and District Missionary Vivian Tates. He was educated in the Houston Public Schools. He's a graduate of Kashmir High School. He was a leader from the beginning and continued his educational journey, earning degrees from Texas Southern University and the policy from Bethlehem Steel Educational Extension Program he received a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Technology, a Master of Arts in Secondary Education, Leadership, and a Master of Science in Municipal Planning and Public Policies. He continued his religious studies and became a 1975 graduate of the C.H. Mason Bible College, earning a bachelor's degree and in 1979, he earned his master's degree from the Moody Bible Institute School of Theology. He has been working and serving in the kingdom of God since he dedicated his life to the Lord in May of 1979. 
He was ordained an elder in the Church of God in Christ in July of 1986 by the late Bishop Robert Woodard Sr. And he served as an assistant to his pastor at Faith Temple in Inglewood of Houston, Texas. And then in 2000, he succeeded his father as pastor. He continued in that capacity for a period of time, but on September of 2007, Pastor Tate was appointed by Bishop Rufus Cowles to the Texas Southeast First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction to become the second pastor of the Powerhouse Church of God in Christ in Houston. He became pastor there after the founder, Dr. Robert Anderson's demise. Since he arrived at the church, the church has experienced tremendous growth, and over the past 18 months, over 100 new members have been added to the church. As a pastor in the Texas Southeast First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Pastor Tate served as assistant district superintendent he has then, was then elevated to district superintendent and presently he is serving the Texas Southeast Greater First Jurisdiction as its prelate. I am privileged and honored to present to you tonight my friend and brother who is a preacher par excellent he will come to you with the word from the Lord for this occasion. Let's pray for him as he comes. After we have heard from the choir, we will all stand and receive this preacher. Bishop Johnny Tates of Houston, Texas.
from you so many people have come and so much has been said what I pray now is that you do for us what we cannot do for ourselves you save us sanctify us and accept our repentance thank you for the leadership of this jurisdiction the masculinity and the femininity thank you for the desires of their hearts and fulfilling of your will whatever we do don't let us lose heaven bless tonight the word may that word from my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight you're my strength and redeemer and if people really knew me before tonight they might be a surprise that you use me in the way that you do. Help these who will be consecrated and licensed, but help them lean in your direction by serving who you put in first place. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our sins. Teach us to repent and sin no more. Then finally, God, help us understand that the greatest nail appointment happened at Calvary. And when it's all is said and done, we die to hear you say, well done. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. You may be seated. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We have gathered here to tonight to carry on the king's business. And the people who do the king's business are usually princes and prince. Sometimes we think too little of ourselves until we realize the kind of status God has given us simply by calling us his. We're grateful to be invited. I did tell my friend and your prelate what a joy to have known a man who's survived the struggle. A whole lot of people think that this is easy. But some of the things that the leaders go through, God designs them. And first of all, he sent his son through some. And we just need to know this is not an easy job. But now that you have quietly sat down, I'm going to ask you to rise to your feet again and celebrate the wonderful leader of the historic Louisiana First Jurisdiction, the Bishop James. Come on, let's celebrate him. There you go. Come on, everybody say, he is our gift. He's, he's your gift. He gave some. And some people think some go with the title. No, he gave some people evangelists. And some people prophets. And some people pastors and teachers because he knew what the people needed. And too often we lose out because we don't think God know enough about us to give us what we need. So I'm grateful to have this opportunity to spend time with you. You may take your seats again. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna mess with you a little more. Now I'm gonna ask you to stand again and celebrate the first lady of this jurisdiction because of 
There you go. Thank you. You can. People don't know what you go through. I know the pastors and superintendent know what I'm talking about. People are so quick to run our wives down. I see them. They say that uh, she called me, but she just being nosy. You see, so no matter what they do, it isn't the right thing to do. And that's why we need to give them honor and deference because the Lord has been good to us. I want to also recognize uh, my traveling companion, the Bishop Morris Jenkins, the jurisdiction from Peru. You remember when the disciples were divided into pairs of two? Jesus looked and saw whose personality fit together. Amen. Sometimes you travel with people and God gives you what I call a counterbalance. Because sometimes we get a big head and we got to have somebody keep our feet on the ground. And so I, I love he as my traveling companion and to all of you administrative assistants. Amen. God bless. I'll move to the feminine side. You will a joy today. Thank you so much for coming to visit with me. But I want to just acknowledge all of the administrative assistants and all of the superintendents and uh, area managers, pastors and elders, because I have gone through much of what you go through. And when my father said, the Lord's going to call you, I said, Dad, you're closer to him. <laughs> Ask him not to do that. I'm serious. I had watched my father struggle. I watched how he was treated. And I asked him, you think I want to go through that? I watched people borrow his money and, and then leave the church so they wouldn't have to see him face to face. I know I'm talking to you who lead congregations. And I'm, I'm grateful tonight for all of you, to the saved and the sanctified. I'm grateful to be here with you. Uh, I, these friends, uh, M.O. Jenkins, uh, Bishop Jenkins and J.P. Augustine, would you stand? And Superintendent Stroger, those are guys I grew up with. And they are coming back from the funeral in Memphis and decided to come through here. I know they came to visit him. Surely y'all didn't come through here to hear me. They hear me preach enough there in Houston. But thank you guys. These are friends. And then to your supervisor, the Department of Women. Amen. Okay. Anybody can say it after me, class act. Dr. Terry is a class act. And we're grateful for the kind of uh, contributions to a superintendent's cabinet, all the supervisor's cabinet, all the people who work with her. District missionaries, your, your prelate honored you, but nobody knows the trouble you've seen. And we thank you. And then finally, we always acknowledge first ladies, but I want to go to wives or ladies first because some, li some uh, ladies are not wives, but they're, they're over the house, so they're ladies who are first at home. And we need to acknowledge them. The wives of pastors and all of you who serve in those capacities and my traveling companion, you know, on the feminine side, Myra said, I want to go if you're going to the Bishop Proctor. You know, I say, I'm always going a lot of places. You don't always want to go with me. Why you want to go this time? She said, Bishop, don't give me a hard time. And so I want you to celebrate her. She's here. We, she wanted to come. And the gentleman that you sent to help me today, Pastor, is it Williams? Oh, man. Be careful when you represent your bishop. Don't go there trying to impress based upon you. He was such a gentleman today. To he and his wife, I thank you, uh, adjutant, your representative. And then lastly, to all of those of you who I did not name your, your position, when I count to three, shout your name. One, two, three. I want to honor you too. Our church, with its protocol, always giving everybody accolades, and there's nothing wrong with giving everybody 
heaven's going to be populated and there ain't going to be no special line for bishops because only servants will be in those lines. Come, come with me now to a passage of scripture that you'll find in the book 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. I want to talk to those who will take the mantle of servanthood on tonight. And if you've got it, say got it. And if you need me to wait, say wait. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. It's important. And I want to just take the first five verses in that second chapter. And I'm reading from an American Standard Bible. Those of you who have more Bibles, you can see a different point of view, a different perspective based upon the writer. And so tonight, that first verse says, And when I, this is Paul's words, when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech, nor of man's wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I was determined to let you know nothing about me except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in a demonstration of the Spirit and His power. So that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. You may take your seats for just a little while tonight. This time that is ours. I want to talk about determination about the cross. A whole lot of time we want to serve God, but we want it because of the glamour, not because of the gloom. Every now and then we have to really make up our mind, what does the cross mean to us? And so at the time of uh, Paul's letter back to the church at Corinth, they had established a reputation that had been centered on Christ. Originally, this town was the capital of the province and perhaps the richest and most impressive city in the county or country of Greece. But at the same time, it was easily the most corrupt. Sometimes your members can be the best, and at the same time, they can be the worst. And so Paul is writing back to, to, to point out to them that they needed to be known not only for their trade, but they needed to be known for their treasure. They were known for their size and culture, and the population had been invaded by all kinds of religious philosophies. Acts chapter uh, 17 tells us that, that the town was an old town, but it had a lot of building budgets and bullies. Same town. But the church was still a newborn and had programs and striking personalities, and the people wondered what it is that can set a city apart that enables it to, to be a difference maker in the lives of its residents. Sometimes people think it's education, but eternity don't require you to be smart. It requires you to be trusting. Too many of us want to be rich, but we don't want to save. We want to be smart, but we don't want to read. We want to be well-liked, but we ain't got a good personality. It's too much about us instead of about whoever it is you're talking to. Y'all going to help me? So as a saint of God, we have to trust the one profound, significant treasure in any city ought to be the church of God in Christ. And more importantly, it ought to be the person we represent and the foundation on which we stand. A lot of time we say we save and can't nobody tell until you tell them. When Paul first got to Corinth, he was just one small man on foot, took up residence with another man who was poor. No band, no parade, nothing announced his coming that was... No sympathy for the note, nor was there sympathy for his message. And as troubling as it was, they were, there were no human nor monetary resources 
placed at his disposal. Forgive me, but a whole lot of people want to become preachers on pastor's anniversary. They see the offering, but they don't see the work. They don't see the trips to the hospital in the rain in the midnight hour to see people who talk about you. Because you have to be able to serve folk who don't like you before you can honestly be good at serving folk who do like you. And so the reason that this passage is, is, is here because the situation and circumstances are mentioned to warn those of you who are about to take on the mantle of idolship. To you missionaries, it's, 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 it's hard. It looks good, but sometimes you have people like uh, 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 Bishop Proctor who make it look easy. It ain't as easy as he make it look. It just means he been born for such a time as this. So the records show us that the apostles' initial visit was the most positive in the history of the city of Corinth. Paul had a secret. Tell your neighbor, Paul had a secret. And if you're going to be a successful elder or a missionary or anybody of note, you're going to have to limit how much you say or what you say about you and talk more about the person and work of Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that, you make a determination about what is that cross worth when you pick it up to carry it. There were splinters in his back. There were people who tripped him. They'd pull his beard out hair by hair. They stuck all of the thorns so that bled. They even moped, stuck him in the side so his water would break. So he was one having a firstborn. Yeah. Everybody who's been born again came through him. So they broke his water so he could have more Christians. Tonight, I want you to know you got to make a determination. You can't just look at the glitz and the glitter. Sometimes it's some tough time. Folk talk back to you. You be giving them good advice, and they, they tell you you don't know what you're talking about. And that very person falls a victim and come right back to you. And you got to either loan them or you got to help them. You got to write letters for their children to help get them out of prison. And even when they get out, they ain't coming to your church. That's why you have to determine within yourself whether this is what you really want to do. I found here that to make a determination about the cross is to make a determination about your personal limitations. Paul came in verse 2, he said, for I determined. You see that? Not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What Paul did was recognize within himself that to see the limits of ourselves yields the kind of power that the Holy Ghost needs. Because if I'm too big for my britches, it ain't going to ever help me get dressed. These are the things that all of us have to refuse and justifiably have nothing to do that can limit his power. Am I talking to anybody? You can't limit his power. You can make it difficult for him to dispense it when you are a renegade and when you continue to think that perhaps you, you might be in a position of power, yet God has not allowed you to get there yet. Paul didn't go there. He said, I didn't come to your city using eloquence. And y'all know sometimes we get so eloquent until we raise our voice. Jeez, it's so nice to see you. But sometimes the gospel puts you and make you get down and dirty. You have to be able to help people that you don't want to help. I didn't come using eloquence. I didn't come using enticing words. I didn't come with superior wisdom. Paul did not go there to impress nor to be seen as a great philosopher. The Greeks admired men who were skilled in rhetoric, vocabulary, grammatical enablements, and presentations of many words but the record about Paul's life included information about his learning and I want to just tell you he was as prepared to be a poet as some of the great poets in Greek literature but he was also able to reason with as many people as any other apostle but while we 
heard what the Greeks admired, let me tell you what God admires. He puts us in proper place. He, he, he's not impressed with human cleverness. That, that don't impress him. He, he, he's not multisyllable words. All of the, the backstabbing and backstepping and backsliding that go on in the church. Not impressed with that. What he wants us to do is help one another to rely upon the Bible and yet study to show yourself approved a workman, what? That needeth not be ashamed to rightly. But if you can't rightly divide it for your life, how the devil you think you're going to help me do it in mine? My brothers and sisters, this is exactly what we have to do to assist with our intended determination kinds of limits that God would place upon us as a straight deliverer of the gospel and it involves uh, avoiding shortcuts. Many of you remember in the Bible when Jesus was subject to temptation after having fasted 40 days. Satan came to him and offered him a shortcut. He said to Jesus, you don't need to wait to get back to get somebody to feed you. Make the stones turn to bread. But Jesus resisted the shortcut because the Lord didn't lay aside his status nor his power to endure unpleasantries and restored his visit to the script that he and the father had come up with before he caught the flight out of heaven. Ain't nobody listening to me. And at the center of your testimony tonight is Jesus Christ, not the church. Come on, it's Jesus Christ. Yeah, the church is built on Jesus. Jesus ain't built. On the church. It's not built upon a theological system. You can't place your emphasis upon his cross. Yet you ought to believe that he fed 5,000 with two fish heads. Now you know fish is single and plural. So when John puts in that fish heads. He's trying to tell you it was one female fish. And one male fish. And when Jesus brought them back to life, you know he can bring things back to life. He could have brought them back to life and put them in the water. Tell yourself he just didn't have time. So he brought them to life in his hand and population and helped them reproduce right there and then. And then came up with a microwave that warmed up cold fish and fed the people. They sat down and ate. Brothers and sisters, that's who you need to talk about. Come on, you can help me. Barley bread is the only kind of cereal where the bread seeds rise above the crust. The only one. So the boy had barley loaves. He could rake them off, plant them, and fertilize them, and they would have grown bread. He just didn't have time. Sometimes your trouble is so enormous when you call on your friends, they ain't got time. But when you call on Jesus, he make time. That's why you got to talk about him. Can I move on? You got to make a determination on your personal affirmation. All of us have to be careful and not present ourselves as a master or a profession. Brothers and sisters, I hear people say, I think I want to be a pastor. That's a calling. That's not a profession. You have to be called to do this. And the devil is going to ride your back to try and convince you that you have made a terrible decision. Yes, if you study Paul, you will note that he actually did just the opposite in regards to himself. Verse 3, listen to that. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. Matter of fact, Paul admits that when he arrived at Corinth, he was in terrible condition. 2 Corinthians 10 and 10 said, I didn't grumble about it. I, 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 I took my problem and I, I kept it to myself. Although he had an extreme uh, consciousness of his weakness, he knew he was insufficient. That's what you got to understand. No matter how intelligent you may do, God is not going to save you on your IQ. He's going to save you on your willingness to serve him. And so, in light of the gospel's mercy, his help shined more bright at the point he had more struggle. The Bible tells us something unique. It says that one can put a thousand to flight and two can, 
Now you, now you know that's bad arithmetic because two times one is two. But ten times ten, ten times a thousand is ten thousand. That means he does things for you at a different mathematical accuracy. You don't have to take your time tonight to be superbly put together. Preachers, you just need to know tonight you're talking about a perfect person, but you don't have to be perfect to talk about the person. Oh, y'all, y'all helping me. Y'all will mess around and make me feel like I want to preach. You got to preach him when you psychologically fearful. You got to preach him when you're filled with anxiety. You got to preach him when you're down in the dumps. You just got to preach him. You got to preach him in season. You got to preach him out of season. You got to preach him when the pews are full, when they're almost empty. You got to determine your own heart that you will let nothing separate you. From the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And when we admit that we can not alone change the citizens of a city, remember that God can. The Corinthians witnessed Paul's fears and shaking, but the power of God poured through his shaking so that the people were able to see the power of God instead of the fear of a man. I got to turn the corner and head out of here, but you got to make a determination about personal motivation. When you work for the Lord, that will be motivation that you simply have to refuse to use. Human persuasion is what most people are using now. Going to be enough? No, it's not going to be enough. Because Paul had not come using his voice inflection, nor his clever maneuvering, his overpowering logic, or his manipulative saints to sinners. But when we lean totally upon the gospel, the Holy Ghost scholars regulate that our expansive thinking, we see the Apostle Paul, when fearful and shaking, continue to preach. What did he continue to preach? Christ and him crucified. Yes, it seemed that something bigger came up out of Paul's set. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 24 and 25 updates us that the people became shaken and the secret of divine power came up over them despite his infirmities. That's how Paul was able to write first uh, chapter Romans, verse 16. Be not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power, come on, unto salvation. And all of us tonight need the, re the, the result on the foundation required to do a good job. When you stand before the people to present his word to them. Yes, so that your faith would not rest upon the wisdom of men. Every time we place anything other than Christ at the center of your sermons, you're doomed to fail and the word will never last. You persuade people you find somebody got greater gimmickry than you have. You find somebody that are able to lead them away if you dazzle for it. With reason, somebody will come along with a false fast one on them, and then they'll turn and find a false god. But when you anchor people, to the cross of Christ, the foundation changes. Folk who walk on him, yes, they saw him last hanging on a cross. When he come up beside them on their way home, he brought a power that was far greater than anything they'd seen before. I wonder if somebody here gonna help me. Yeah, the Lord. Somebody will say thank you, Jesus. I say the Lord can take bread from me and make them more powerful than presidents. The Lord can take street walking women and make them the best women the world will ever see. Yeah, the Lord. Take your yesterday and won't cancel your tomorrow. You afraid 
I just gonna catch up with you. I came to tell you tonight, you gotta make a determination. Somebody shout about the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus being crucified is the thing we do. I'm going to cut across the field. I found there is a, a nice chapel along the Roman road, Via Della Rosa, there in the Crystal City. And upon that church, upon that chapel, there's a sign that says, We preach Christ and him crucified. So they planted ivy so the greenery make the brick look better. That ivy lined and covered with those words here. And it's so long, all you can read, we preach Christ. So men that were holy had gone. Men that were not holy had come. They started preaching him as a humanitarian. They started preaching him as somebody who looks after the Lord. They started preaching. He sided with them. They started preaching anything except him crucified. After a while, the ivy grew over Christ. Only thing stood, we preach. They began to preach with book review. They began to preach encyclopedia explanation. They began to preach how you could invest in them. And it's so long, nobody in that town got saved. What we need to do tonight, tell your neighbor, give him by the hand, tell him, cut that ivy down, cut that ivy down, so everybody can see, preach Christ, and crucify, every nail of hope, every crown of freedom. Everything, every hoop, every swing, brought a new tonight. So if you're here tonight, tell your baby, tell your baby, I'm saved because I got crucified. I'm going home because I got justified. Yeah, yeah. Somebody here tonight, you ought to know you're making an obligation because he gonna stick with you you stick with him don't let nobody turn you away he's the best thing that ever happened to you come on somebody put those hands together and celebrate because he is a business maker for all of us who try to make a difference There may be someone here tonight that have heard this gospel message and don't know Jesus. All of the preaching points to Jesus and the finished work that he done on the cross. You may be a backslider tonight, walked away from the Lord, but this message challenged you to come back home. You can rededicate yourself back to the Lord tonight. You may not be in the place that you once was. It's time to come back. If you're here tonight, just raise your hand. God wants to bring you back. He wants you to be saved and to have eternal life abiding within you. Sometimes we're afraid to step out but it's time to come back home time to come to Jesus time to give your life to him and be sold out for him Paul had been converted on the Damascus road and he said to the Lord Lord what it is that you want me to do 
God could have told him. But God had a preacher down on Straight Street. He's going to tell you, go see the preacher. He's going to tell you what you must do. And tonight, if you don't know Jesus, you need to know him. What is eternal life? It's to know God and his son, Jesus Christ. You may be online tonight watching and have walked away from the Lord. You can come back home tonight. This message is compelling you to give Jesus your life. We're going to pray at this time. Father, here I am tonight. I'm in desperate need of you. I can't make this journey without you. I tried to do it on my own and I failed every time. Everything I am, you know already about it. Here I am, Lord. Open your mouth and say, here I am, Lord. We surrender our will to you. We accept your finished work on the cross. We you know that you were born of a virgin. You died for our sins on the cross. But good news, you rose on the third day with all power of heaven and earth in your hands. And we accept your finished work in our lives even now. We receive the benefits of the cross and we accept you. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. You said it in your word. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Accept us now, Lord. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And God, we accept the finished work that you've done for us on the cross. And if you believe that, you are saved tonight. Come on and clap those hands for salvation and those that have returned back to the Lord on tonight. God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Bishop Tate, for that great challenge that you gave to us tonight. And now we come to that service of ordination. Bishop James W. Proctor, prelate of the historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction, on behalf of the ordination board, I present to you these men present to be ordained as elders in the Church of God in Christ. We certify to you that these men have satisfied the requirements of this jurisdiction and the Church of God in Christ, and we believe him to be qualified for this order. Holy brethren and saints of God, we bring before you and God these ministers to be ordained to the Christian ministry. After due examination and recommendation by the proper authorities, we present these persons before you and before God. But if there be any of you who know any valid reason for which any of them ought not be received into this holy ministry. 
let him come forth in the name of God and disclose to me the impediment. Being that no impediment has been rendered to me prior to this moment, we shall proceed. Beloved brethren, we've come to this most secret, serious and important act of God to ordain you as messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to present you to God as watchmen and stewards of the Lord to reach, teach, admonish, feed the flock of God, to lead them into spiritual pastures, full and green. I charge you before God and these witnesses that you preach the word of God and commit yourselves to this charge and to Christ who is the door to the sheepfold and eternal church. We do hope and pray that you as the ministers of Jesus Christ will keep as a trust this ministry which has been delivered unto us by Jesus Christ himself, showing yourself an example in every good work before all people to be ordained to the Christian ministry gives you the right and privilege to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to visit and pray for the sick, to care for the widows and fatherless, to bury the dead, to bless homes and sacred buildings, to marry those who are eligible, and to lead about a godly life as a minister of Jesus Christ. Brethren, do you believe in your heart that you are truly called of God to preach the gospel? Do you believe the Holy Bible to be the only word inspired of God to lead all to eternal life by salvation and the only rule for our faith and practice? Are you willing to preach the word of God and uphold the doctrine of Christ and the church of God in Christ and perform the ordinances of the church? Will you be diligent in prayer and in fasting, in the reading and doing what is contained in the Holy Scripture, and study to show yourself a workman unto God that needeth not to be made ashamed? Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you to obey the church of God in Christ constitution? administration and judicial governing laws as an elder in the church of God in Christ. Let me read that one more time. Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you to obey the church of God in Christ's constitution, administration and judicial governing laws as an elder in the church of God in Christ? Brethren, do you now in the presence of this company commit yourselves to this trust and responsibility? The word is your authority from God. Preach it. Live it. And that minister is holy art sacraments to the saints. In Jesus name. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things. Give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. 
Will the candidates please come up to the platform? the placement of the elders Kala and Cross. They've come forth and they're kneeling. And those selected individuals will place the collar on and once they are finished I will come place the elder's cord around their necks. apostolic duty of ordaining these to the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray that they become faithful ministers of Jesus Christ 
and bring forth fruits of righteousness and God's people to the heavenly prize and life everlasting to Christ our Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask Bishop Tates to come and pray the prayer of consecration. To God our Father, sometimes words are inadequate, but tonight our desire is that you will have your way with these men, protect them because Satan desires to sift them as we, but I pray that you will put the Holy Spirit on all around them, saturated, and so that every time they cough, that's the mucus that they will receive, the Holy Ghost's presence. Give them power. Help them understand that they can't defeat the devil no more than they could defeat Russia. They need the power of an immaculate God. So wrap your arms around them. Keep them from every hurt, harm, and danger. And then, God, the main thing is don't let them be lifted up. Block that pride. Block that yeast that changes bread to feel better about itself after it rises keep it out of them and bless their families give them the resources that they need let them live as long as they want but don't want anything as long as they live just help them please you consecrate them and then God I hope that they heard let them serve their leaders that's what you have done to make a difference in our church respect the leadership because when we don't do that it's you we disrespect so I pray that you'll give them the kind of support that they have given unto their leaders, unto their bishop, and that they will see themselves in somebody else the years to come. Come on, God, you can do it. You said nothing was too hard for you. And then you said that we could ask you for anything. And so tonight we ask you for the blessings of heaven upon these men on the earth. Bless this jurisdiction and its leadership and do it in a way that almost scare them to death because sometimes you can be just that good to us. And I ask that you do it for Historic Louisiana first and for its leadership on this night, on this evening. And I ask in the precious and powerful name of Jesus the Christ, thank you, amen. may rise. Pastor Donald Catalan, the Jurisdictional Executive Secretary, will come now for the issuance of the ordination certificates. He's going to read one certificate in, it, one certificate in its entirety and recognize the others by the elder's name. Church of God in Christ, Incorporated, World Headquarters, Memphis, Tennessee, USA. Bishop C.H. Mason, Founder, Certificate of Ordination. Know all that minister, Giovanni Brown, has been ordained a cleric in the Church of God in Christ and is now granted the title of Elder. As prelate, of the historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ, I attest that he has satisfied all requirements for ordination that is presented by the Holy Scriptures and as contained in the Constitution of our beloved Church. He has also satisfactorily demonstrated his Christian experience. We therefore recommend him to be received of Christians everywhere, as long as the present unity of spirit exists, while he maintains a godly life and a standard of teaching in harmony with the Holy Bible, we therefore recommend him to be received of Christians everywhere. Done this second day of December in the year of our Lord, 2022. Bishop James W. Proctor, Jurisdictional Prelate. Pastor Donald T. Catlin, Jurisdictional Secretary, and the other signatures of 
those in authority of the Church of God in Christ are there to affix to the ordination certificate. Brian Brumfield. Dietrich. Ricky Russell. Marlon Winbush. We would like to now welcome you to the Pastors and Elders Council of the Church of God in Christ. At this time, will the spouses of the newly ordained elders please come forward to the platform. God has brought you together as husbands and wives. Now, you're not with a wife, but you have a choice to keep and a God to glorify. My address to the wives, he is called, you're his spouse. You're to undergird his ministry. You're to work with him. Don't run ahead of him. Don't try to control it. Let God speak to him and use him in his service. And you be the help meet that God has placed you there to be. You be the encourager that God has placed you there to be. Don't take it as an occasion to beat him down, but work with him. And you might even know more than him, but he has the call. So you stay in your place as the spouse. 
and let him lead forth. And when you do that, God will bless the ministry wherever you are. You just have to learn how to work together and be a team to get the job done. When you don't work together, you will never develop a ministry. You will never develop a ministry. You cannot overpower one another. Work together as a team to accomplish the mission that's before you. You have a choice. That song says a choice to keep I have. A God to glorify. I have a soul that I must fit and ready it for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do the master's will. That's your charge. Go forth and let God use you in the ministry. The blessings of God be upon you. Our Father, we pray blessings upon the, these spouses. And ask that you would let your anointing rest upon them. God, them be used mightily in your service as encouragers, as helpmates. And help them to be that instrument in your hand to make a difference where they are planted. God, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing rest upon this sister. And let her be that instrument in your hand, O oh God, to help her, help him to achieve the goals that have been placed before. God, he has not a spouse, but let him work in honest, working to achieve greatness in the vineyard. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, I pray blessings upon this spouse and ask that you would let her be that instrument in your hand to make help make a difference where they are planted. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't run ahead, but walk together. Work together and accomplish greatness for God. On behalf of Supervisor Ruba Terry, and the Department of Women, the Elders and Ministers' Wives Circle, First Lady Dr. Isora Proctor will come now and share a presentation to each of the wives. They're coming now. Report Jennings, or should I say Bozier? 
Jennings, Shreveport, Ruston, and Opelousas. Here we come. We're ready to do the work of ministry. Go in peace and the blessings of God go with you. Supervisor Ruby Terry and the Secretary of the Board of Examiners come to proceed with the licensure of missionaries. I present unto you these persons present to be licensed as missionaries in the Church of God in Christ. Will missionary Pamela Barnes please come forward? And as I read this, while you're coming, you have met the qualifications as set forth by the Church of God in Christ. You have been recommended by your pastor and the Department of Women Board of Examiners to receive evangelist or deaconess license as a missionary in the church of God in Christ to evangelize the work of the church as much as lies within your power to travel and conduct revival meetings as endorsed by your pastor to carry the gospel of comfort and deliverance to hospitals jails convalescent homes visit the shut-in give physical assistance where there is a need and participate in community crisis, giving physical and spiritual relief. Will you, as a licensed missionary, continue to be a supporter of your local church, district, jurisdiction, and national work, giving support financially and spiritually, doing any Department of Women or general jurisdictional programs? As missionaries, you must adhere to the teaching of holiness and modest apparel with a life that exemplifies sanctification. Do you promise to honor God and your church in your service and conduct? Candidates, will you uphold the missionary pledge of the Church of God in Christ? issue of sense of the licenses. The presentation. Missionary Borns, God bless you for the labor and the love that you have put in to the work of the ministry and into the district.
Upon the selection and recommendation of the district superintendent, I'm appointing you as the district missionary for the Mansfield District under the leadership of Superintendent Maurice Rogers. Now I ask Superintendent Rogers to come forward and receive this vessel who shall carry on the women's work in the Mansfield District. He is coming now. Okay, at this time, we're going to issue the license and then we will have yours. Come forth. Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Bishop C.H. Mason, founder, Department of Women, Dr. Barbara McCool Lewis, General Supervisor, Mother Willie Mae Rivers, General Supervisor Emeritus, Mother Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, Executive Secretary, Department of Women, Evangelist Missionary License. I commend unto you Pamela K. Barnes, our sister who is a servant at Red River Church of God in Christ, Historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction, and has been examined as to her qualifications, gifts, graces, and usefulness for the evangelist work. She is hereby authorized and empowered to expound the scriptures and hold gospel meetings according to the rules and regulation of said church. Bishop James W. Proctor, Jurisdictional Bishop, Pastor Donald T. Catlon, Jurisdictional Secretary, Mother Ruby F. Terry, Jurisdictional Supervisor, Missionary Delphine Cuba, Secretary, Department of Women. Leanna J. Boudreau. Susan Carey. Raylan Combs Stinnett. Jacqueline Maria Crump.
Eunice J. Davis. Camilla Dorsey. Jennifer Guillory. Shiana Janice Hopper. Jefferson. Patricia Marie Joseph. Ruby A. Lathan. Linda Love. Benny Morgan. Jacqueline Miller. Tamara Nails Porters Portis Catherine Paddock.
Deaconess Missionary License, Tracy Pullard. Linda Faye Rogers. Tammy W. Sun. Sharon Spearman. Paula Spikes. Ashley Nicole Thibodeau. Essie Wilson. Triana Wimbush. the presentation of the missionaries to the bishop. Honorable Bishop, if you would please stand, please. <laughs> I feel you, Bishop. All right. I present to you and the members of this congregation these sisters for acceptance as licensed missionaries and ask that you give every respect and encouragement in the work of the Lord according to the governing laws of the Church of God in Christ.
Bless you, Supervisor Ruby Terry. And to these who have been licensed tonight, do understand that you are not just getting a piece of paper to floss around. You have a responsibility. Responsibility comes along with licensure. And when you accept this charge, then you should put forth every effort to fulfill it. I want to see all of you in attendance at the forums. I need to see you in attendance at the workers meeting. I need to see you in attendance at the Holy Convocation, the AIM Holy Convocation. Don't just come to get your license and then we don't see you anymore. I want to see your names on every credential report that's made. You, you accepted this challenge. You wanted this license. So you take with it the responsibility that goes with it. And you work hard to do the work of ministry. Do understand that you're still under your pastor. You're not to get these licenses and go gallivanting. Talking about I'm doing a revival over here. You're not supposed to go do any revivals without getting permission from your pastor to leave. Amen? Amen? I just want to sound the alarm that we don't want you to do what the normal practice. Get your license and adios. We need to see you in the jurisdiction, in action. Your pastors need to see you in the local church in action. Amen. You didn't need license to stay at home. Amen? Amen? So I'm charging you to accept this responsibility and take it serious. I'm going to call for the spouses of these ladies. I'm going to pray a prayer of consecration. I don't want you to come up, but I do want you to stand where I can see you. Now, we have some spouses who are not preachers. And just because your husband is a preacher doesn't mean that you need to be a missionary. Okay? But if you are truly called of God, you don't try to lord it over your husband. Amen? Amen. Don't be in competition with your husband. If he is the pastor, he's still the pastor. You're his help me, and you are his encourager. Spouses, remember, God gave you a fourfold function. You must fulfill it. What is it? I'm going to give it to you. Take notes and follow through with it. Number one, you're the priest of the home. You're to lead the wife, not the wife lead you to church. Secondly, you're the provider in the home. Don't send her out to do revivals to get money to bring home. Number three, you're the protector. You protect her from the dangers out there. 
And fourthly, you're the paramour. And what is that? I use that word to get four Ps. But it means you're the lover in the home. In the home. In the home. In the home. Take care of your business at home. As the lover in the home. And wives, work with your husband in order to be effective in the ministry that you've been called to. Let us pray. Our Father, we pray that you would consecrate them to do your will, to carry out their commitment and to do the work of ministry as they take this charge tonight, I pray that you would be with them and with their spouse so that they will be able to, together, achieve greatness in your service. We ask these blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This missionary unit have presentations to be made. Ladies, you may go back to your seats now, and we will give you presentations. Come on, let's celebrate them tonight. Put your hands together for them. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things that he has done and is doing. At this time, I will yield to Supervisor, Des to Supervisor Ruba Terry to acknowledge appointments from the Department of Women. Thank you, Bishop. And yes, you are one of the greatest bishops in the world. Thank you for allowing me to serve. Yes, sir. Come on, let's give it to him. Let's give it to our bishop. Amen. Amen. At this time, tonight, I also recognize the emeritus status of missionary Beverly Smith, the district missionary of Evangelical District. I, as supervisor, shall become the district missionary until such time the superintendent, Artis Williams, shall recommend a capable leader for the women's work of the district. Point of clarification, 
Missionary Pamela Burns, upon recommendation, will remain as the district representative for the Department of Women until such time the superintendent shall select a district missionary. God bless all of you. Will you continue to keep me in your prayers? God bless. I'm going to call up Elder Demetrius Lewis. and bring your wife with you. Elder Dietrich Lewis, as the founder and pastor, I'm acknowledging this appointment to you, of you as the pastor and founder of the Unity Worship Center of Shreveport, Louisiana. This church will be assigned to the Ruston District under the leadership of Superintendent Thomas Kennedy. I congratulate you on this appointment and I charge you to work the work of him that have sent you while it is day. Because when the night comes, you can't do it work. Sister Lewis, I want you to work beside him and with him to accomplish growth in that church. I want that church to become a signal mark in Shreveport. Amen. I want to see growth take place there. Dietrich, you come from good background. I worked with your dad, Superintendent Downler Lewis, and I know that you are capable of doing the work of ministry. And I'm charging to go and make it happen. The blessings of God be upon you. Congratulations. The observations. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a time we in this momentous occasion that we have all experienced. Let us give our candidates and our Lord and Savior a hand on tonight. Somebody say in the morning. Somebody say in the morning. The Bishop's December planning session will be held tomorrow morning. Saturday, December the 3rd, 2022 at 10 a.m. in the morning. We're asking that everyone please be on time in the morning. Get up early. Breakfast. Check out of your hotel room if you need to. And let's meet us here. Let us all be on time. There will be a session for evangelism, mission, music. Sunday school, youth, urban initiatives, ushers, pastors, and elders, see, and district leaders. There will be a special session for pastors 
concerning a special grant opportunity specifically for our church in historical Louisiana jurisdiction through our urban industries. It's right here at the Zion Hill Church, 602 Hunter Street, Pineville, Louisiana, 71360. On following the forum, the Department of Women will host the Miss Royalty pageant. Some individuals, oh, you can go ahead on the Miss Royalty pageant. Some individuals have purchased $30 sponsorship tickets from your district missionary, but you can purchase a ticket tonight in the foyer. Please see Dr. Velma Carroll or any district missionary to get your 30 sponsorship ticket for the pageant contestants to attend. Immediately following the service, follow all candidates who were ordained and all of our missionaries who were licensed, I need everyone to meet me in the colonnade immediately following service. I understand that you want to take pictures in fellowship, but I need everyone to, all of you all to, following the service on tonight. This is your first act of obedience as an ordained elder and a licensed these are our observations. That chair is a low chair, y'all. It's time for the Holy Communion celebration. We have the scripture reading by Superintendent Billy Smith, He's the chairman of our board of superintendents. We have the blessing of the elements by Episcopal advisor, Maurice Johnson. In that order. First Corinthians 11 chapter, 23rd verse, down through the 33rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, and often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily should be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink in damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this call many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
For if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we judge it, we are chasing of the Lord. And we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this most wonderful day. I have moved in this house. I have blessed us. I have enabled others to move up in the ministry. Thank you for our leaders. Keep us under the blood. Now, Lord, we pray for this communion. Holy Communion. The Communion is holy. And we are hoping and praying that everyone that receive it will be holy. Search my heart, Lord. If I've done anything wrong, forgive me, Lord. Set me free in the name of Jesus. It would not be good for me to take this bread or drink this wine unworthy Lord help me Lord and help everyone that receive it bless and keep us I pray in Jesus most holy name Amen
section and receive your communion. Those elders and pastors are at their stations and they will hand you your communion. Starting from the rear, you will come forward and you will come and receive your communion. congregation shall receive your host. You will return to your seat and wait to partake of the bread and the cup at the direction of the jurisdictional bishop. One day when I was lost, he died above the ground.
same night that he was betrayed, took bread, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, he said, take, eat, this is my body, which has been broken for you, eat all of it. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped and said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed for the sins of many. Drink ye all of it. For as often as ye eat of this bread, and drink of this cup. You do show forth the Lord's death until he returns. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the and in observance of the recessional, please remain at your seat until the jurisdictional bishop, the messenger, the visiting bishops, the board of superintendents, and the newly elders and licensed missionaries have recessed. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We want to thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you for this anointed service on tonight. Father, we pray that for those that's going to be traveling back home down the dangerous highways, that God, that you would take control of the steering wheel and bring them back to their destination safely. How may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost Rest, root, and abide with us all until we all meet again 
and let us all sing together. Oh. Mm-hmm.